first I'd like to spend a few words about our Finnis, who we are, then immediately dive into that uh, case with an exemplary uh, customer, what their problems and needs are or were, what the solution is that we developed in cooperation with the customer and of course also HashiCorp and the challenges we had to overcome and then at the end some takeaways for your company. So about Adfinis, um, Adfinis was, is a service provider in the open source environment and was funded back in 2000. Uh, this year we're celebrating our 20th birthday. Over the years we've grown to over 70 employees, most of them highly skilled professionals and most of the funders are still working at the company. We are still located in Switzerland, so am I. And recently, as you heard before from Kuhn, uh, we're also in the Netherlands. Our focus lies in strong partnership with open source providers and a broad customer base. Our main partners are Red Hat, SUSE, and of course HashiCorp, where we hold the highest partner stand status. We work very closely with uh, HashiCorp. Um, as I said before, for this presentation, we've taken a real example of a customer where we integrated Vault recently. Let's have a, a few words about the company. Um, it's a company in the finance insurance sector. Um, as you might imagine, it's, uh, they are heavily regulated, like GDPR or FIPS or whatever standards they have. This will of course bring additional challenges. Um, the company is, has uh, over 50,000 employees and a little more than 10 million customers. Um, they, are, they are spread around the world. They have 2,000 branches and su subsidiaries in different uh, countries. And at the headquarter, they have three data centers within the same region. And that's also where we started with, uh, with uh, implementing Vault. Um, well, the problems they were, they were struggling with, that's, uh, that's quite similar from customer to customer. Um, with that amount of, of branches and all around the world, you have different solutions that people are using and the secrets are spread all over the place. So they were really struggling to keep track on, of their secrets. And another, another problem that was identified was um, plain text secrets. Um, from my time in security, uh, it was always easy to have a look uh, at internal source code repositories of, for instance, of the CI CD chain, um, have a look at the bash history of some server that you've logged in or, or just at scripts that are left by some administrators and you will most certainly find um, some secrets that you can use uh, if you are an attacker, of course. Um, then the monitoring of secrets. Um, they of course have monitoring of the of the very precious secrets, but um, with all the the cloud service and so on, um, a, a real monitoring of, of everything they didn't have. So they weren't sure uh, when are credentials used or secrets, and where were they used. Um, for instance, are they still valid? Which comes to the, the next point. Um, when was it rotated the, ne the last time? Um, different types of secrets, they have to be rotated differently. Some, some they have to be rotated manually uh, because it was simply not possible. And uh, this and with, with Vault, you will have the, the possibility to automate more of this and you are not too much dependent on what solution you are using. So 
with Vault, you will really have a standardized way to across platforms where you can where you can uh, rotate or manage your secrets in a in a automated way through uh, API. And um, about the scope and the needs they were having, um, they were looking for Vault to exactly tackle the problems we had we were talking about before um, but they had some uh, additional wishes they wanted to have um, for instance um, HSM integration that's quite common in in um, in this sector um, companies usually have uh, hardware hardware security modules in place and uh, where they keep the mo their most um, most value, uh, yeah, uh, the most precious secrets, such as um, CA key pairs or some uh, high secure data container credentials and such things. So, um, because Vault will become your main secrets engine, you probably also want to have an HSM integration. And, but the biggest advantage to have the HSM integration is that you have auto unsealing. Um, auto unsealing means if the Vault boots, it gets automatically unsealed. Um, just a, I just have to explain this uh, real quick. Um, if Vault standard Vault installation starts, it comes up, but it uh, it stays encrypted. All all that is all secrets that are stored in within Vault are encrypted and not accessible, and it's then a manual process to 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 unseal your Vault to decrypt the stuff. And with an HSM integration, you can automat automate it, this. So if, if one vault has to be rebooted or by accident reboots, uh, it will autom automatically be unsealed and will join the, the, the cluster. Uh, as a start, we had, the, as I said before, we had the three physical servers in three zones. Uh, later on, they wanted to to have also a disaster re recovery cluster. Um, disaster re recovery cluster is the exact copy of the primary cluster, and in case the primary cluster goes down, um, you will be able to switch to the DR cluster. Uh, one of their additional needs were that they want to to delegate secrets management to their different teams so that they are able to to manage some of their secrets in 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 a policy company policy compliant way and of course they had active directory in place and also the users should should be able to log in with Active Directory cred credentials, and uh, and the different teams they should be also able to um, to sign certificates, to hand out certificates to machines or to 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 servers or to clients. And uh, after this, everything is in place. Um, you can start with a. Uh, with storing your secrets in secret stores and um, access them through app roles. That's the that's the authentic authentic authentication method for machines. That it's for uh, that it's uh, strictly API driven. So let, let's have a look at the solution we developed. Um, but first, have a look at the the reference architecture, we usually discuss the reference, reference architecture with HashiCorp directly. This is the reference architecture with integrated storage with Vault um, for uh, three zones within the same region. Uh, as a start, this, was, this, is, um, this is good for, for the customer. Um, 
in, in an ideal way, you would have one cluster per zone. But um, in this case, as a start, this is, this is enough. Uh, if, if, you, if you use, if you have this setup, you can, one zone can go away. Also, you can use, or, or you can lose two nodes, for instance, the node in zone B or the node in zone C on the right side, one of them, and you still have a quorum of three nodes left. So uh, this, is, this is the initial um, setup we had. We had, as I said before, we had three physical servers in zone, one in zone A, one in zone B, one in zone C. And below, below you'll see the, the HSM integration. So they had a physical HSM node in each zone. They were together, they were attached within a cluster. And um, in case, for instance, the HSM in zone C goes down or has a problem, um, the vault in zone C will switch to an HSM and in the other two zones. So um, then we developed together with the customer and with HashiCorp, we, we developed uh, how the setup should look like for, for that customer. Um, on top, you will see the root. The, this is the, the main namespace of Vault. If you, are, if you are installing plain Vault, you will have just the root namespace. Um, if you would like to use namespaces, you, you need to have a Vault Enterprise version um, so uh, the, the root is your the root is where we started um, they were looking for um, two different areas the development area the integration area and the production area a quite um, traditional approach and for each team they wanted to have such a namespace per area and as you can see, they had also um, root CAs for uh, development, integration, and production, and the same for LDAP. And um, in case you you were when you create a namespace in development, um, it will automatically create a sub -intermediate, uh, intermediate CA for from that is signed from the sub CA from the development. Um, uh, and then the other thing is uh, the user can authenticate against the LDAP in development and they will automatically um, assign to a group in the namespace where they have different roles. And with those roles uh, are also policies attached. And in this example, you will have uh, like developer secrets area and for instance the user role is is allowed to write down to write delete read or whatever uh, yeah and then the challenges we were facing um, it's the challenges are also, they weren't very different from other customers. Um, the, the biggest thing usually is the know-how transfer. Uh, you probably all know, know how, how this works. Um, a consultant comes in, installs something, and is gone after the project. And then probably the, probably the, the guy who, who, was, um, who was involved in that installation is, is also gone and then you are there with a solution and nobody knows how how it works really. Um, Atfinis usually sets up Vault or other HashiCorp products together with the customer. And for this, we provide um, guides that lead through the installation and configuration and also provide some guidance for operation tasks, like in this case, uh, how they add the, the remaining two nodes that are uh, missing at the moment. And then 
we, as fast as possible, we go over to the use cases where we think there it will there is the, the biggest profit by the customer. Um, we implement the use cases together and also there they will get uh, uh, some guides and um, a lot of things they will find on GitHub also in our repository. <coughs> and another thing is the structure of secrets. Um, you can you can really, really uh, do uh, structure the secrets as you like, but this also has a high risk of chaos. So as you can see in that example here, um, you can have a secret store, that's the KV, that's a key value store for secrets. And um, this one um, is for everything. So you have for area one, area two, you have the same KV store, but you can also have for each area, as you see on the right side, uh, you can have different key value stores. So this makes it easier if, if one area is going away or, or whatever happens to this area, um, you can just drop the key value store. Um, it's, it's really worth it to, to have some thoughts about how you want to structure the, these things. Um, but also the, the nicest initial structure you develop will probably not be the last one. And then we were thinking about um, for this customer, how can he um, deploy the, the whole namespace configuration in a, in a, in a managed way? Um, because uh, if you have that amount of employees and teams and branches all over the world, you probably will have a lot of namespaces. So we thought, yeah, let, let's, let's use Terraform for this. Um, Jonathan did already a quick introduction. Um, so with, with Terraform, you have infrastructure as code, so you can deploy, configure and manage your, your uh, infrastructure as, as code. Um, and you have always your current deployment status through a state file um, for, all, for every, for all HashiCorp pr products they have providers that extend the functionality of Terraform to also configure their products. Um, there are other providers like, for instance, uh, Google Cloud, Azure, AWS, where you, where you can um, deploy uh, virtual machines or services in those clouds through Terraform. Um, in the black box, there is an example of such a resource. In this case, it's um, LDAP authentication and where, where you have the, the different variables set for how, how um, you connect to your local LDAP or Active Directory for user authentication. Uh, it's just a small um, example how this works. Um, in this case, on the left side, we, we developed a small, a small module, a mo small Terraform module where we were able to, to create those namespaces. You have here, an, you have a namespace, test one, uh, name, you, you have a key, w, a key V store uh, named KeyV, you have a LDAP, out method called LDAP. You have the, the LDAP uh, properties or parameters you need to connect to your DC. And you have a couple of policies that have that shall be attached to the newly created uh, namespace. Then you plan your deployment with the plan. You'll see what will be created. In this plan you have four things that are created. That's uh, the namespace, that's the secret store, that's the, the LDAP auth method and the, and the policy. So that, that makes it four. And if you are sure everything is, is um, 
it's going to be deployed according to plan you can you can hit uh, apply and and the resources will be created another another thing is if there are hsms the hsm integration is uh, is always a is always a thing that can lead to delays in the project um, it usually is best if the hsm guys are aboard as soon as possible so if if the words you can read here if, if you don't know what they mean um, you probably should uh, find the guys who who, the, who do um, And uh, another thing is that, um, as I said before, you have you have um, the HSM is not just there to to provide auto unsealing to to Vault. Um, from a customer perspective, it's usually there because they they keep their uh, most precious secrets there. Uh, for instance, uh, private keys for for um, for CAs. And um, unfortunately, or no, not unfortunately, that has a reason, but um, it, it's not possible to, to, to use the, the intermediate CA functionality of Vault and keep the private key in the HSM. And probably you have also this policy that you need to have those keys in the HSM. But for this, with the HSM integration, you can make sure that the key and all the secrets are encrypted by the HSM uh, before they are stored in Vault. So you are, you are not able to, to access the key without a uh, connection to the HSM. And this, of course, makes it uh, FIPS compliant, which is usually the, the original reason why why the security guys are asking you to keep the private keys in in their HSM. But after after you manage this, you have a nice auto unsealing and and you you are compliant at a quite high st high standard. For those who don't know what FIPS uh, means, FIPS is is the standard where for instance um, uh, payment terminals for credit cards and so on are, are um, uh, certified. And yeah, let's come, and that's the, the, my last slide. Um, uh, as you heard, as you heard now these couple of minutes um, with Vault, you will have an API driven and thorough monit monitored secret management. Um, really consider uh, using Vault Enterprise for bigger environments because um, disaster recovery, uh, cluster performance replication, and also on-premise HSM integration is, um, those are enterprise features. If you are just if you are just new to Vault, um, your start starting point will be learnhashicorp.com, where you have a, re a huge amount uh, of e-courses, manuals for all the products of HashiCorp. Um, uh, another recommendation is if you start uh, using Vault, start as simple as possible, um, get confident with with uh, all the the things you can use in Vault and get more advanced later. If you start uh, advanced at the beginning, you will most likely uh, lose the oversight. And um, yeah, consider looking into Terraform for managing Vault. Actually, you could manage whole your whole Vault in, in the installation with Terraform. Um, yeah, just have a look at it. And um, if you need help, just contact us, uh, we'll be there. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.